Good day to all. Today, we're going to discuss about exchange rates, business cycles, and macroeconomic policy in the open economy. For this particular series, we'll be dividing this into three parts in order to manage the length of our discussions. So we will begin with the open economy. Basically, in an open economy, there would be free or lesser restrictions of exchange or exchanges of goods and services. And if we talk about the open economy in the world level or aspect, so here would be the two aspects of the interdependence of the world economy. So we have the international trade in goods and services. Basically, our buying and selling of goods and services will be in global scale or international scale. And there would also be worldwide integration of financial markets. So Financial assets and liabilities are also exchanged in worldwide level, especially the investment asset classes like stocks, bonds, foreign currencies, and etc. So we have to define what nominal exchange rates are. And basically, the nominal exchange rates are the rates by which one particular country can exchange foreign currencies of another country. So as defined here, if someone in one country wants to buy goods, services, or assets from someone in another country, so that person will be exchanging whatever currency that he or she has for the meantime, and then that will be used in order to exchange currencies, which are, of course, the ones used in other countries. Example, if we are living in the Philippines and our currency is Philippine pesos and we would like to buy items in dollars, of course, we have to buy dollars or U.S. dollars, for example, in order to settle that particular transaction. So normally this is going to happen in a foreign currency transaction wherein that transaction is expressed and denominated in foreign currency and to be settled in the foreign currency. Then. Here is a definition also of a nominal exchange rate or exchange rate simply between two currencies or E sub nom or E nom. This is the number of units of FC or foreign currency which can be purchased with a unit of the domestic currency. So if we say, for example, we have one peso, so how many dollars that we can buy with that one peso? Or let's say one peso this a view with yen, or any other currency. So how many units that we can buy with that one domestic currency? Domestic currency, DC, is also known as local currency or LC. Then here is an illustration showing to us about the situation in Canada vis-a-vis -vis US, real and nominal exchange rates and net exports from 1970 to 2003. If we can see on the graph, the graph is erratic in terms of the movement. So we can see here that the Canadian net exports to the United States are measured on the right, which is the vertical axis. And this is where we can see the real and nominal exchange rates. The real exchange rates will be defined later on, but basically the real exchange rates as opposed to nominal would be focused now on the number of goods that we can buy using our foreign, let's say, currencies that available vis-a-vis -vis our local currency. So that's what our real exchange rate is all about. And then the Canada-US real and nominal exchange rates are measured on the left vertical axis. So we can see such also here, the real and nominal exchange rates, then the net exports again are on the right. Okay, so we can see on the horizontal axis, or we call this the X if mathematics, the years, and then these are the Ys. So we can also have this particular illustration anyway, graph wise. We have to take note that the nominal and real exchange rates tend to move together, which is true. So we can see that the nominal exchange rate could be higher or lower than the, the real exchange rate. And also true for 
real exchange rate vis-a-vis -vis nominal exchange rate, they tend to move together. And then we also have to take note that the net exports rise when the real exchange rate falls. What could be the reason for this one? Although this can be advanced at this particular slide yet. However, let us just mention that, again, the real exchange rate would represent the goods that we can buy with our available currency. So from our local or domestic to the foreign currency to buy the goods. So goods now are focused. Whereas for nominal, we're talking about the foreign currencies that are basically bought using the local currencies. Anyway, so if ever the real exchange rate falls, this means that we can buy lesser of the goods from foreign countries. And this means that our imports are lower. Imports are goods which are purchased from foreign sources or foreign countries. And then to get net exports, remember the formula is exports less imports. So if lesser imports, therefore the difference would be higher. That's why net exports would rise. And hopefully you got that point there. Next, for exchange rate systems, in a flexible exchange rate or floating exchange rate, from the word flexible and floating, meaning no fixed system exchange rates, then the rates are not pegged or fixed to a certain currency. And then they are determined by the conditions of supply and demand in the foreign exchange market. So that would be resulting to the interplay of the supply and demand. And then law of supply and demand would play here or would play a major role here. Then exchange rates move continuously. In fact, to summarize, exchange rates of foreign currencies, remember, are posted like on a daily basis. But we all know that it can change like even in seconds, minutes, or even milliseconds in real life situation. The reason for that is because of the trading activities, the buying and selling of such. On another hand, in a fixed exchange rate system, the rates are set at officially determined levels or pegged to certain amounts or values. These official rates are maintained by the commitment of nation central banks, like in our case, Banco Central de Filipinas, to buy and sell their own currencies at the fixed exchange rate. However, this one is somehow theoretical because in the real world, especially in the Philippines, we can notice that our rates or exchange rates are variable or changing, ever-changing, again, summarized on a daily basis, vis-a-vis -vis with other currencies or the foreign currencies. Then real exchange rate is now formally defined. The number of foreign goods someone gets in exchange for one domestic or domestic good. So we can see it here that the real exchange rate would focus now on the goods, but for the nominal exchange rate would focus on the foreign currencies. Real exchange rates are based on price indices or indexes of baskets of goods, so groupings of goods. And then there are basically, again, goods grouped. And we will determine the price indices, and these would become the real exchange rates. And we assume that each country produces a single good. Again, this is just an assumption to simplify the computations and calculations to get the real exchange rate. Now, this is our formula for the real exchange rate in which E is the real exchange rate. And then that is equivalent to E sub nom, the nominal exchange rate multiplied by P, which is the price of the domestic goods measured in nominal currency divided by the price of foreign goods measured in the foreign currency. So we can see here that there is a sort of parallelism with P and P sub 4 because P sub 4 would focus on the foreign items while P would focus on the domestic and the nominal. Then another items or terms that we should know would be appreciation and depreciation. If we say appreciation, which is discussed anyway next, that would mean that our local currency would be able to buy more units of the foreign currency. So that is very important because this would determine also about 
the purchasing power or ability of a certain currency to buy goods and services. So in this case, in appreciation, a certain local currency would be able to buy more units of foreign currency. Therefore, it becomes stronger. But in depreciation, the opposite is true. So the LC would be able to buy lesser units of FC, and that would become weaker. In the Philippine setting like us, normally dollars would fluctuate. Of course, one dollar equals blank number of pesos. Since normally that is how we state the exchange rates, but we can also manipulate the rate using indirect quotation. So direct quotation would normally be the one foreign currency is equal to how many units of the local currency. And then the indirect quotation would be the opposite. So one LC equals how many foreign currency. But then for our case, especially in the Philippine setting, we focus with the direct quotation, which is one foreign currency, $1, for example, equals how many units of peso. Normally, we would be happy or happier, especially for foreign remittances, like the dollars or US dollars, if, for example, the dollars would strengthen. So if dollars would strengthen, US dollars, meaning $1 can be able to, for example, in that case, and of course, let's say the rate before is $1 equals 50 pesos. And then later on, it becomes $1 equals 52 pesos. In that case, dollar strengthens, which is a foreign currency under direct quotation, wherein it able to buy now more units of Philippine pesos. But then again, if the foreign currency strengthens on that occasion or situation, our local currency weakens. It's because if we are going to do the reciprocal, like 1 over 50, which is equivalent to 0 0.02, and then we are going to divide 1 divided by 52, that's going to be 0.1. So in that case, we can say that when $1 equals 52 pesos, our one peso is a little of fraction of the dollar. So that's why we can say that the opposite is true for the local currency. When the foreign currency strengthens, would appreciate or appreciates, then the local currency depreciates or weekends all right so this is somehow confusing but we will get used to it hopefully then terms depreciation and appreciation are used with or associated with flexible exchange rates but for the fixed would be devaluation and revaluation and basically they do mean the same a real appreciation is an increase in the real exchange rate so this means that Using the same quantity of domestic goods, we're looking into the local goods, we can buy, we can trade for more foreign goods. Then a real depreciation on another occasion or hand is a drop in the real exchange rate. So there is a decrease, in other words, of the real exchange rate. Then another concept that we should know is PPP, which stands for purchasing power parity. This is similar foreign and domestic goods or baskets of goods or groups of foreign and domestic, which should have the same price in terms of the same currency. So if we talk about foreign and domestic, then we state them in equivalent terms. There is equivalency of the systems of the prices of various goods in local vis-a-vis -vis with the foreign or domestic vis-a-vis -vis with the foreign. All right, so PPP implies that for the nominal exchange rate, that is equivalent to the foreign price over the domestic price or the nominal price. So this is our concept, or in other words, E-NOM, the nominal exchange rate is the, or this ratio of foreign price and the local price. And PPP holds in the very long run. Then we can also continue with our analysis, which is focused now on the changes. But basically, our concept here is that 
the change of our E or the nominal exchange rate, for example, and then divided by the amount really of the nominal exchange rate. And if we incorporate the ratio of our local minus the foreign, so we get our overall E. Okay, so in that case, the E here, if you are going to look into our previous formulas, this is E, which means the real exchange rate. And we can just continue with the substitution or rearranging of the formulas, but at least we get the concept about purchasing power parity. We are not going to be economists anyway. So real exchange rate and net exports, as explained a while ago in the illustration or graph. So real exchange rate would focus on domestic goods, which can be traded for the foreign goods. So we are focusing now with the goods. And then this would affect the country's net export. As explained a while ago, if the real exchange rate would fall, meaning we would be able to exchange lesser of the foreign goods, our imports would be lower. Therefore, our net exports would be higher. So the higher the real exchange rate, which would translate to more imports, knowing that net exports formula would be exports minus imports, then the lower a country's net exports will be, again, since we're able to import more. Then how do we determine exchange rates? So as what you've said, the nominal exchange rate or E sub nom is the value of a currency, for example, the dollar. And then the value of the dollar is determined by supply and demand factors in the foreign exchange or forex market. So we can see such here about this particular graph. On the x-axis, we have the number of Canadian dollars, so the units, and then on the y-axis, the value of the Canadian dollars expressed in the nominal exchange rate. So again, nominal exchange rate would focus on the foreign currencies in relation to the local currency. So we can see the demand curve, which is downward sloping, and then that is from our left to right, and then the supply of dollars denoted by S, by the way, demand for dollars is denoted by capital B. Capital S is upward sloping from our left to right. So the reason of course is our respective law of demand and supply. So as the respective number of units would change, also the values would change of the respective currencies. On the part of the demand, remember we are basically on the consumer's perspective or the buyers of the currencies. So if, for example, let's say the prices of these Canadian dollars would increase here, so going upwards, the values would increase, then the buyers of the currencies would be able to only buy less, assuming we have same disposable or net disposable income. On another hand, if, for example, the supply, this is now on the seller side of the foreign currencies, if the prices would increase, then they would be tending to supply or provide more currencies. The interplay and intersection of the curve of demand and supply is this E here. So at this level, this would be the equilibrium point and the number of dollars to be traded that the two curve would be equal and also the value of that Canadian dollar in the nominal currency. All right, so hopefully you got something from this first part of our series. Thank you very much for listening and God bless us all. See you in the next video.